One of these images is being recorded with a DSLR and the other with a webcam. Let me know which one you think is which. Okay, so this is the DSLR here, and this is being recorded with Canon's EOS webcam software utility. And this one is the Nexigo N660P. I'm making this video because Nexigo just put out a software package that takes this webcam and all of their webcams to a whole new level. You can get Nexigo's new webcam software on their software and download page. I'm going to put a link to this page in the description. Okay, so using Nexigo's software that they just released, we can basically go in here and dial in this camera to where we want it and what makes this uh, stuff so huge is that we can save all of this as a preset. Anybody who's messed around with camera settings or uh, video input settings in OBS, you've probably seen something that looks very familiar to this right now. And um, so this is nothing new to you. The big difference between doing this in OBS and doing it through Nexigo software is that you can save this as a preset. So when you reboot your computer, and bring it back up. You don't have to dial everything back into where it was. That's a massive pain in the ass. Uh, you get everything where you want it to be in OBS. You reboot your computer, you come back, and it's reset to this image right here. We don't want that. We want to basically be able to um, make those changes, and then when we reboot, if I have to reload a preset, that's fine. That's a lot easier than messing around with adjusting every slider bar after I get it where I want it. But basically, um, I've seen a lot of reviews on this camera, a lot of video reviews, and um, people have uh, given this camera some pretty bad reviews. And this is what this camera looks like out of the box. You need to set the adjustments on this camera to get it looking really good and that's the great thing about this camera with these adjustments you really can get it looking really nice as long as you go through and dial everything in where it's supposed to be um, but basically you can set your resolution here and um, I've got 1920 by 1280 by 720 uh, at 60 frames per second right now and I'm only getting 33 frames and I'm pretty sure I've got this plugged into USB 2.0 so after I get done rambling here I'm gonna make sure I'm plugged into a USB 3.0 port and we're gonna continue from this but the reason that I've got this set in 720 right now is because it fits this window on the screen you would probably want to do this in uh, 1080 um, and dial in your colors and your lightness and everything that way. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to do it in 720. But let me check that cable and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I did check the cable and we're still only getting slightly over 30 frames per second. I think it has to do with just looking at this through this preview window. I'm not going to worry about it. Right now, I have done a full review on this camera, and I did verify that it does indeed record in 60 frames per second. I myself don't use 60 frames anyway, but I just want to assure you that whatever you're seeing here, that's not accurate to this camera. I think it's just something to do with this, this uh, Windows preview mode. But anyway, we can get into uh, configuring this camera right now with these settings and really make this thing look a lot better. And uh, the first thing that I do, the most important thing, is uh, I uncheck auto on exposure and I take this to negative five. And this gives me a good working place. If you see, um, if we uncheck auto exposure, you can see that immediately it starts to wash out the image. We get these hot spots. So shut that off put it on negative five if you got more lighting if you're by a big window where you've got daylight coming in you could go all the way to negative eight and it's going to look even better but for now in this room that i'm in it's nighttime right now i don't have sunlight coming in in the daytime when i've got my window open i can go to negative six and it looks even better but we're just going to stick with negative five right now so with that um, exposure set to negative five, now I'm going to bring the gain up just a little bit. And um, the rest of this stuff, except for focus, we can't really do anything with. This camera is not made for zoom. It doesn't pan and it doesn't tilt. We can roll the image to flip it 
or make it upside down. For example, if your camera's mounted upside down and flip and upside down, but I'm just going to set that back to its default setting and work with it from there. The last thing that we're going to look at on this tab is our focus. We're going to uncheck uh, autofocus. If you want to keep autofocus on, you can, but what I've found is that um, uh, un it, it, this camera does kind of focus hop a little bit sometimes. Um, it's not real bad, but occasionally it is noticeable where you'll see it'll go a little blurry real quick and then it'll pick the image back up and smooth itself back out. Um, I'm only a little shorter than arm's length away from the camera right now, so and I'm not moving, so I'm going to turn focus off and dial in the focus and right about there right about there looks pretty good and I'm just gonna set that and leave it right there so that's it for this screen what we're gonna do now is go over to adjustments and you can see in this image that I'm looking pretty blue I'm not sad I'm just the white balance is off. So we're going to uncheck auto white balance. Another thing with unchecking auto white balance is your video could just change color out of the blue decide if the camera decides that it doesn't like how the lighting is coming in. So we're going to uncheck auto white balance and we're going to slide this until my skin tone looks a little bit more natural and looks a little closer to what I am. And I've got some white back here. I can base it off of that. So um, a little bit orange so probably about right there that's pretty good that looks about what I look like and then we can go down here and we can mess with the brightness we can mess with the contrast and I'll take the contrast up just a little bit and the brightness mm, I think that looks pretty good right there we can also mess with the hue but I tend to leave that alone because this camera does have pretty good coloring uh, when you get it when, and when you take the white the auto white balance off. Uh, the saturation, if you want to take the saturation up a bit, you do have that option. If you want it to go, you know, have a little bit brighter color and have the colors pop a little bit more, you can. Um, you can desaturate it if you want. And I think default was 50. I'm going to leave it right there. That looks fine to me. We can take the sharpness up if we want a little bit. You know, you can take it all the way and it looks... I mean, for that much of an extreme, it doesn't look terrible. But it, it the image starts to look really grainy if we do that. So what I'm going to do is... It was the default at six. You could soften the image up too if you want, but I th think, yeah, that looks fine. And we can take the gamma up to brighten the image up a bit if we want, or we can take it down, which will crush the blacks a bit. Um, and as you mess with one thing, you can change something else. To Like if you mess with gamma, you can take your brightness up. I am, yeah, I'm just going to set that at zero. That's fine. And maybe after that we've messed with gamma, we can then mess with the contrast a bit. That looks fine to me. Uh, backlight compensation. I've not really seen that it makes much of a difference. And power line frequency. I'm in North America, so I want to set this at 60 hertz. So, for the most part, I think we're looking pretty good here. This is, you know, a, a good place to be. I think the sharpness is a little bit too much there. I'm just going to set it back to its default of 50. This all comes down to, you know, viewer preference, what is pleasing to your eye. And so now we can save this preset. And I'm going to save this as the N660P. And if you have another Nexago camera, you can you know, save that as, uh, you know, you can save that as something else, but this is my favorite Nexago camera, so I'm going to just save that. We see save preset in 660p. We're going to say okay, and 
I'm going to reboot the computer and we're going to take a look to see if uh, applying that preset brings us back to this image. So be right back. Okay, so this is awesome. After I rebooted the computer and launched the Nexigo software, I assumed that I would have to load a preset here, uh, but it just picked up the last used settings and this is what it came up as. So I didn't have to do any of that. Um, I probably didn't even have to launch the software. If I would have opened this up in Zoom or whatever other program, OBS, whatever, it probably would have saved these settings. So this is, <laughs> this is great. I mean, I couldn't be happier with this software. I, I assure you, I'm not just shilling for uh, Nexigo with that. Um, yeah, rebooting the, the machine, I did not have to reload anything. It just picked it up. So that's cool. And okay, so the reason that I opened this up in OBS is so for anybody who isn't aware, um, we can also go ahead and take this further and, and add more uh, to the image to get it a little closer to something more that we want. So uh, stuff that I commonly use is if we go into the configure video, We've already done all of this. This is, has been done in the Nexigo software, so we never have to mess with that again. But another thing that we can do is we can go in here and add filters on top of this. And as you see, I don't have any effect filters applied to this camera right now. But what we can do is we can go in here and we can add, um, we can add color correction. And, you know, we can mess with the gamma and the contrast and brightness further here if we want. Uh, I don't really see any need to do that because it was something that we could do in the Nexigo software. But um, we can, uh, That's and that's how a lot of people, this color correction filter is how a lot of people adjust their webcams um, through OBS, and that's how they get around um, applying all of these things without uh, um, applying those settings every time that they open OBS. So uh, this one... I don't really see a need to do color correction, but on top of this, one of the things that I, I like to use if I want to get a, a cool effect going is I'll do a, um, I'll apply a LUT. I've got a bunch of, of LUTs here. I downloaded a bunch th from uh, Gaming Careers, so go check out that website and you can get this free LUT pack. They've got just a massive amount of LUTs that you can get. And um, I have from the uh, LUT pack plugin. I've got the webcam presets and we've got, you know, I, if you want to go with a more low, low contrast, you can uh, apply something like this. You can uh, go with something a bit more colorful. You can go, you know, absurd. Um, I personally like a nice low contrast kind of you know, look for a lot of the stuff that I do. Um, but we can go in and get all of these different film LUTs and try those out if you want a more of an, an artsy film look. If you apply this kind of stuff, keep in mind that you're going to have to, you know, um, maybe add more lighting to make things look right or whatever. But you can get some really cool looks with different LUTs that you would apply to the image. And I think this is a great webcam for doing this kind of stuff. And so that I can assure you that this camera does indeed record at 60 frames per second. And I believe that that preview window was just a uh, fluke in how that preview window is set up in the Nexigo software. Here's a quick little frame rate test. And I'm going to play this back and look at it to ensure that this camera does indeed capture at 60 frames per second. I want to be transparent, so here's a quick disclaimer about how I recorded my Sensationalist intro. This camera is indeed a DSLR camera, but it's an 11 year old DSLR. And really that's not going to matter for the most part. A DSLR camera is always going to look better than a webcam no matter what kind of software you put behind that web camera. But what I'm recording this with is the Canon EOS webcam utility. And what the EOS webcam utility does is it scales the video down to a, a vertical resolution of less than 600. I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head, but as you can see, it's even cropped in. And most of the time 
when you have a DSLR or mirrorless camera with a clean HDMI output, you can uh, get a image quality that is far better than any webcam, no matter what kind of software that webcam has behind it. I just wanted to be very clear about how I'm recording with this specific DSLR. This is the Canon T2i, and like I said, it's about 11 years old, and I'm using the EOS webcam utility. So this was kind of cheating in this video, but I wanted to be really clear about that. And to be perfectly clear, I'm not trying to convince anybody that a webcam is going to be better than a DSLR. I'm just saying that this particular webcam is better than this particular DSLR under these particular scenarios. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.